chosen to do something with some rather ancient equipment, if you like. Um, eight millimeter cine. Um, many years ago, I made a cine film for my ruling engine and how I go about ruling diffraction gratings. But first of all, I'll just show a slide to show the machine uh, and its later form. Because um, it's obviously a bit difficult pointing out things on a movie. Uh, <coughs> the first thing you require for every grating is a flat blank of glass, of course. And quite high standards of flatness. And you have to coat it with a thick film of aluminium. Uh, if you haven't gone for a micro thick, Grooves on a modern grating are actually shaped rather like a sword, as you, many of you will know, in order to direct the light in one direction. And not just scratching on the early grating to be a lot class. Uh, a diamond, of course, has to be given a precise shape, um, which uh, I decided to do it myself rather than employ, which have been very expensive. And as a little aside, <laughs> I went to the, the uh, library in Birmingham to look up there to polish diamonds. And years ago, the old Central, Central Reference Library was a haven for um, tramps who used to go in there for a walk. <laughs> and uh, one of these old chaps with a book on some erudite so he in front of him as an excuse to be there. Uh, <laughs> now, when you've uh, hopefully ruled a grating, test it of course by various means, you can test it by interferometry or even the full core test you know, in the right uh, apparatus, spectroscope or interferometer. Um, and the early ruling machines relied entirely on the mechanics of the machine and accurately divided very accurate screw which had been lapped literally for days on end to try and smooth out the errors of bond and periodically wobbling it when it was put in the lathe. Uh, the thrust bearing also had to be very precise because the thrust bearing was at a slight angle to the axis and the bearing point was not on the axis of course if the screw would move back and forth slightly as it rotated. Um, the uh, mechanism for carrying the diamond backwards and forwards is also a very great problem because you may have to pursue that path anything from 10,000 to 100,000 times or more depending on the source of the diamond. I have a huge grating in America. Uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, in about 1950, I read a passage in a book by the physicist R. W. Wood, in which he suggested that um, you might build the machine into an interferometer and uh, count fringes as you move the grating slide along and set the uh, diamond moving after you've counted so many fringes, you see. And uh, of course, he said you could only do a thousand so fringes like this before you, in fact, up from sheer fatigue. But uh, during the war, they used some photomultiplier tubes. Actually, create noise, not a photomultiplier tube. And you could buy these cheap, then I bought one intending to make beautiful stars, which I never did do. But it became obvious that I could count fringes electronically using this device um, with an appropriate light source. Um, I tried neon lamp at first just to find out how it and then later on I actually made some electrolysis charge tubes with a cadmium 114 isotope. That's a crank jack, as you can see. The crank uh, connected to the, the board on there. But that one is back in the door of the slide. I think we four or five seconds. That end there, that's the little primitive bit which carries the dark and the bottom of this. Um, and this end here is a can, and it's got a 
sides that well in there and that shaft there and in here so you can look in the wrong way and you can't hear it anyway here is a magnetic clutch which drives this gear train the screw runs along underneath here and um, as it as the straight jack rotates it moves backwards and draws a groove and then the contact down here closes and it advances this screw ready for the next as this rotates it advances the screw the right amount as it can spring here. Now um, unfortunately it's concealed but just below the uh, Sealed by the edge of the tank that is in, is the interference system. Modest Gavin has reminded me that I have not mentioned the piezoelectric creep corrector, which I fitted at a late stage in the development of the machine. Even after the screw has stopped rotating to advance the carriage one groove space, there is a small creeping movement of one or two tenths of a fringe due to the release of elasticity in the machine. To try and counteract this, I fitted a very slim subsidiary table on top of the main grating table and to which is fitted the mirror of the interferometer which moves with the grating. This table is supported by frictionless leaf springs and connected to a piezoelectric actuator made from two crystals of the type used in gas lighters. A transistorized black box monitors the fringe output for any change from a set level and applies a voltage of up to 250 volts to the piezoelectric crystals to restore the grating to its correct position. The corrector is remarkably effective and operates to within 10 millifringes as far as I can tell. The top is a human hair and those are the lines that are about 40 in the width of a human hair. An earlier version of it, and, and the, the, the actual slides came in the diamond in that position. On That's a piece of plate glass uh, before doctrine. And this miraculously, in just a few strokes, converted into a glass. <laughs> <laughs> This is my uh, homemade vacuum, but the, 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 the diffusion pump is. Uh, That's just another bit of glass, that's what I was going to
Dat is ook zo. Een, een,
Oh, and this is the door on the trolley chain. The top. Well, we just have. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you should have told me when I come in. <laughs> 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 <laughs>